Okay. <laughs> right. Don't fall off. Might need a lead around the arena. I don't know why you're relying on me. <laughs> so these two horses, they're greener, they're far less experienced. Well, mine is far less experienced uh, than the last horse. Uh, he's actually, this is a seven-year-old horse. He's just turned seven, but uh, he has done uh, basically uh, nothing. Uh, so it's going to be a big day for him. He's going to learn, or big evening for him. He's going to learn a lot. Uh, but we, I have to bear in mind uh, that kind of, kind of where he is in his training. So I've got to be quite sensitive uh, to his kind of needs today uh, and give him the support that he needs. Uh, Tom, tell us a bit about your horse. Right, so this horse is from exactly the same stud as the last one. We got them at exactly the same time. We broke them in as three-year-old. Very green, but green in a very different way to, whoop, to the last one. A lot sharper. I've come off this more times than I care to imagine and hopefully tonight won't be another time. <laughs> they won't laugh if you do. <laughs> I think we'll be laughing when we try and catch it, I think. So I think, I think it's really important that, uh, you know, when we're taking these green horses out, we don't, have, we don't have any pressure on them and we kind of tailor what we do uh, towards what they need rather than thinking we want to do that and they're going to fit in. So. Uh, the, the objective for us tonight is to jump these two narrow jumps, which at the moment seems a long way away, certainly for me. Uh, but hopefully, once my horse settles uh, and comes, comes onto the age and just, just gets a little bit more uh, concentrated, we'll, we'll be able to achieve it. Yes, I think I'm concentrated on just trying to get around the outside of the arena at the moment. And sort of with him, he is a bit sharp and spooky. He is very much got ADHD at home. He's um, non-stop 24 seven. But sort of, at the same time, he's got a very good trainable brain, but with that, you just gotta let, give it the time to come a little bit. Oh, so my horse is, uh, he's a really lovely character, but he is very uh, kind of sensitive and shy. Uh, and he's certainly never encountered an atmosphere like this. Uh, so hopefully we can make it a positive uh, experience for him. Yeah, exactly, Mine, mine's done a lot more than um, Richard's horse, but at the same time, he's never experienced anything like this. We do take all our horses um, out to indoor shows. because It's a very different experience to what you get eventing out in the field. At the same time, you need to sort of, they're nearly like two different shows really, but when you get up the levels, it's very difficult to experience coming out, being under light, sort of, oh crikey, that high <laughs> pressure vibe. <laughs> Absolutely, and I mean, what you have to, or what we have to remember with these horses is uh, they're young uh, and, and inexperienced, and what we want to develop with them is a relationship uh, where they trust us completely to do what we'd like them to do. You know, you see, one weekend we're riding around Burleys or Babingtons, the next weekend we're riding these guys. Uh, and uh, you, you, for us, it's really important to remember what level they are and what, uh, what's really important to kind of train into them and, and, and to get a relationship uh, with them. Uh, rather than just riding them like they're motorbikes. Exactly, and sometimes with these younger horses, I do try not to do them too much, but sometimes the Burley Young Event horses are the best way for them to get out and experience being out on the grass, being on a bit of a slope. Whoop. So we'll, oh boy. the same as we do at the show, the same as we do at home, the same as we're doing tonight, we, uh, we'll just start jumping them, we'll get them warmed up, we'll get them on the aids, uh, and hopefully focused on the job in hand. Uh, at the moment, my horse is more focused on the, the kind of atmosphere, although he probably looks like he's uh, concentrating, 
on me, which he's doing his best to. He's still very uh, different to what he'd be at home. And that really gives me, gives me the, the kind of information I need to know uh, where he is and how much I can ask of him. Uh, I don't want to put him in a situation where he's struggling. I want to give, make it easy for him and develop the kind of confidence he has within me. So we're both Ooh. jumping the warm-up fence a few more times uh, to just get them settled in and just get them happy with what we're asking of them. And Tom's still on. Oh, no. Yeah, so at home we have a big problem with bicycles. He doesn't really like them and he's tend to fly around that road and go the opposite way and he's feeling like he's taking the same approach to people. Good boy. So again, just as with some of the other horses, the rhythm, the straightness, everything else. Uh, the, this horse now has just started to relax. I can feel that in the contact he's taking and his back's become a lot softer. Uh, and that tells me uh, that we're ready to start doing a bit more. He started to jump a little bit more, make a little bit height, uh, rather than just stepping from one side to the other. So we'll build a little vertical, thank you. Uh, and then just carry on until the confidence uh, comes to where we need it to hopefully jump these narrow jumps. Sort of all about the warm up here with these um, tram lines. I use them an awful lot at home. I also use them on the corners a bit. But it's all starting to direct the work that we're going to be doing in a minute with the skinnies. Sort of everything's sort of hand to leg, straight line. Boy. It's, it's basics, basics, basics. Would you agree with that, Tom? Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't like this end. If the horses from day one learn to repeat uh, everything in a off, systematic, uh, quiet, relaxed way, uh, for me, it doesn't change from this level uh, to kind of top level. If the horse has got the ability uh, it's just, it's just keep repeating what you do and keep the training uh, and keep the confidence high. Uh, and the older they get, the more they learn to trust you. And then, hopefully, we have uh, uh, a four-star horse. And that's what it's ultimately about. Okay, so, my little fella there has made a little mistake. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna come again, same canter, same rhythm, same distance, same everything. And I want him to have the opportunity to learn without me changing anything. And he might make the same mistake again, or he might learn. So we'll find out in a second. Good boy. And sort of at home, would there be anything in the way of poles or any other exercises that you would aid? Um, you're training at home with a young one? Has he gone? Say again, Tom. Sort of at home, do you... Oh, crack it. <laughs> Is there anything that you sort of add in, like poles or...? No, I'm, I'm very much for keeping it straightforward for the horse. I don't think... I don't think you need to complicate it. Just stay the same once more, girls. Uh, I don't think you need to complicate it. It's a very basic sport, uh, and it's just a matter of keep repeating uh, the basics for me. We'll go bigger, thanks. Good boy. Ooh, boy. Oops, Is 
sort of with my horse, when he gets a little bit tense, especially with the French horses, they do tend to usually go towards their mouths a little bit, so he sort of wants to go down onto his shoulder. Would be his immediate tendency and just get a little bit short in the hind leg. So for me, it's just him relaxing in his body a little bit, a little bit like here. I'm, uh, I'm delighted with the, the, the jump the last, uh, my horse has just given me over the last jump. Can we, can we go down and make that knock, sir, girls? Thanks. Uh, he's really learned from the mistake he made just two fences ago. He thought about it, he's come back, he's corrected himself without over jumping. Uh, he's measured the fence and, and left the poles up, which uh, ultimately, for the show jumping phase, is, is what we want them to do, isn't it, Tom? They don't need to be three foot over them, they just need to jump the fences. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, a lot of people choose a lot of different horses um, to vent on. Jumping is really coming into it a lot more. So you do need your careful horses, but actually, more importantly, that is the trainability, because it goes on to all three phases. I, I think the confidence that we uh, keep hopefully training into them is the key. Yeah, I completely agree, but at the same time, okay, I do think a lot of this little horse, even though he tends to mess around the majority of the time, at the same time, it wouldn't change on whatever horse I was on, whatever ability. Good lad. Okay, Tom, am I right to have a little jump round? What, who, who wants to have a jump round? I'm going to have a jump round, is that alright? Yeah, of course. Perfect. I'll give him my little jump round, let's get him warmed up before we start hopefully jumping these narrow things. I mean, I'm certainly using, this is a really good experience for my fella let's go uh, a bit wider, that tonight. You know, he'll let's gain a lot from this, as long as I give him the right ride, uh, which hopefully I might be able to do. <laughs> There's a lot Sorry. of responsibility when you're riding a nice horse to do the right job. And sort of your last horse had done the eight and nine year old at Venom, obviously a very, very good horse. Would there be anything in the way of changing what you're doing now to, to, to your older horse earlier? No, absolutely. The same, the same, the same, the same. And for me, that was the most important thing which came off the corner and he Ooh. slightly came against your hand, but rather than going against him, he just kept his hands low and soft and the horse came back down to his contact. And then you can see that in the jump he produced through the double. I and think when he, when he jumped the double, then the next oxer, he was very worried about jumping it because he was jumping into the crowd and that's where the confidence and the relationship we have with these horses is the key. We ask them to do some fairly difficult things when they're older uh, and they need to have total trust in us. Would you agree with that, Tom? I completely. Um, okay, I, do you want to have a jump round? Yeah, I'm just a little bit nervous about jumping down the line into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, you just, have you gone up with the oxer? And for yeah, me, be right to go up a little bit as well. With my horse, the rest of it's I'm, right. I'm delighted with that. It's really... Uh, and sort of, he went on exactly the same, they were level distances, probably he sort of kept in things exactly the same on the same distances, whether they... Oh, crikey. Yeah, it doesn't like the sand. <laughs> right, well, hopefully he doesn't whip round after he lands after that oxer. <laughs> and hopefully if he does, you manage to stay on him. <laughs> I've got my neck strap because you can only have it now it's attached. <laughs> I've got my fingers crossed for you, Tom. <laughs> Good lad. And, and the horse, although, was clearly unsure of what Tom was asking him, uh, he was confident oh, no, enough in again. Tom to do what was asked, and, and for me, that's all at this stage we can ask of these horses, uh, you know, is that they, they really, really have confidence in what we 
want I'd them to do. I'd love to go up a little bit. Are you keen going up a little bit? Oh, why not? We'll, we'll find out if that was a We're wise here. move in a minute. Oh, I'm just pleased I survived the long line. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken a dislike to the... Should we have a change of course? I think so. Should we come? Left rein, left rein, left rein, left. Back down off the right. Um, what do you fancy? <laughs> too much options. How about right rein? Okay. It's, very, it's very left handed. Okay, I'm right rein. I'm much better on my right. Okay. <laughs> Tom's much better <laughs> on the right, so we're going off the right. <laughs> Ox on the right, down that to that one on the right. Ox are off the right. Yeah, all the way around and then to just the upright, because it's towards the corner. Yeah, yeah, that's a big question. I agree. Um, it's very often where you see the most simple mistakes. Absolutely. Um, and then for me, round the corner, because that's quite a difficult down your line, and then down maybe the line. then yep. you, then you blew to your um, single yep. oxer. I think if I survive the vertical into the crowd, I'm going to be over the moon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for me, Tom sent me this course. This is, this is nearly a step too far for mine, uh, and I'm I'm thinking about it in my mind. But uh, I, I I hope Max feeling confident. Uh, in me so it's it's down to me now to give this horse the horse the ride he needs i've got to have a good strong canter i've got to be positive uh i've got to trust him and he's got to trust me but this is definitely uh this is a step up for this horse so really good strong canter to make sure he's got the confidence uh and the power Ooh. Ooh. Do you teach ch horses changes from a young age? Uh, yeah, if, if they're there, I don't make a big fuss about it. There you go, and the horse has just really, uh, for me, stepped up to his job. Very, very, very good. And I, I'm going to leave my round there because for me this horse has excelled himself uh, that's a really big question for him today it's your turn tommy all right good boy. Sort of with my young ones, I don't really tend to make. Oh, crikey. Don't try and make too big, big of a deal. I went for the change at the end after the oxer. Tried not to make too... Oh, crikey, I don't know where I'm going. Tom's getting a bit wobbly now. Are you coming down that line again, Tom? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to change the rein over this. Tom's going a bit freehand now, so it's going where he feels like. Oh. <laughs> Oh, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> that time I was a bit straighter over it, but it still had the speed wobbles on landing. Warp, warp. Good, and, and you see Tom there has just given his horse the opportunity uh, to learn from what, what happened last time, the small mistake there going into the double, but he hasn't changed anything. He's just ridden exactly the same, and the horse has responded just as you'd want. The horse hasn't gone crazy high, he hasn't given a massive jump, but he's just come and he's done a better job, which is, for me, uh, what being an event horse is about. These are not 
uh, show jumping horses, they're eventing horses. Uh, and although it, the show jumping is, of course, very relevant, uh, they're still event horses and, and they're not going to give the flash that maybe the jumping horses give. Would you agree with that, Tom? Oh, I completely agree. He is actually, in his breeding lines, he's actually bred to jump, but um, sort of more when he's relaxing his body. So today we sort Can of we put some keep it really this? chilled. V rails that so way. I know we've gone back to exactly the same thing no, as um, on the fence. Yes, perfect. What were we doing earlier? But if I was warming up for cross country, I wouldn't have changed anything if that was sort of my log. Exactly the same imaginary tram line, straight, straight, straight. Always training. Just a bit wider at the base, please. Thanks. Perfect. Towards the and then we need to the skinnies that we're coming lines. up to now. We need to move the tram lines over there. Thanks. Okay, so. Uh, for me, this session was about uh, introducing the kind of younger horse to, to the narrow fence, which obviously, for anyone who wants to go eventing, there's so many narrow fences nowadays, you know, we have to introduce them at a point. Uh, so if, well, when do we introduce uh, these young horses to narrow jumps? For me, we only start introducing them once the horse is established, as a, the, the canter is well trained, you can jump around a course of kind of a meter, uh, without kind of a, uh, a big deal. You know, the horse needs to be rideable, he needs to be on the aids, and he needs to jump normal fences straight from the canter and be rideable. Uh, would you agree with that, Tom, or do you kind of start them younger? No, um, I would be completely along the exact same lines. I'd want to be able to jump, of course, but at the same time, sometimes, in my training, especially with the younger horses, I would nearly start with sort of, um, not that we have them here, but nearly like when you've got the fillers that go together and there's two of them, I'd start with both of those with, um, with the same V-rails as, as Jonesy's put on, on this little narrow. And then I'd slowly introduce it to a single filler with the poles like this on a single filler. And then I'd go from that down to just poles on the sides. So you're always maintaining the straightness and straightness and straightness. Um, that is the most important thing. And then really the rest of your cross-country riding is just what we've been doing around here today within the show jumping course. Um, it's the control, um, it's the repetition. Um, sort of, if you, obviously this is introduction, if you went to a cross country venue, what would you be doing before you came to your skinnies? Uh, well, exactly what you said, we'd have done some in the school. Uh, just slightly narrow show jump, you know, six, seven foot poles. Uh, with wings, uh, well, the, the guide rails, we, I, even with my advanced horses, would always have flags or wings on the side of the jumps. The horses learn from a young age, uh, right the way through, the, to look for the flags or the wings, uh, to guide them over the fence. Uh, for me, it's not acceptable uh, to be jumping these narrow jumps without that, because that's, that's for the horse's perspective. Uh, that, that's kind of really part of it, uh, and it's unfair to expect them to, to kind of not do that. So Tom's there, just come off the right rein. His, his horse has done a little bit more than my horse. <laughs> I don't know where he's going now. Uh, and he's just, <laughs> oh, he's, he's showing, you know, it's right, had to come off the left and the right, which once he's finished playing around, I'm also gonna come off the right. Uh, you know, but, but definitely always with flags, always uh, with uh, um, just making it very clear. We, we just, you know, it's up to us to make it clear for the horse. If you practice well, the horse will repeat that on the day. If you have to run out half a dozen times to jump something, for me, the only thing you've trained your horse to do is to run out. Uh, of course, sometimes it happens, but for me, we don't look for that, you know. Uh, if it happens, then we have to deal with it, but it's certainly, uh, we do everything uh, we can not to let it happen. Okay, so really interesting what happened there. I lost my canter a little bit off the turn. I came very close to the fence, but I didn't change anything. I just uh, relied on the fact that he was going to be confident uh, in, in what I'd asked him and to do it. So I'll repeat it, hopefully better turn, which I've got. Straight, straight, straight away. Got the change uh, and, and I'm, I'm delighted with that. It might seem a very small step, uh, but but it's the foundation of what we want for the kind of top level of the sport. Okay, so now we've jumped that one way with, with the guide rails. We'll, uh, we'll pop those rails on the floor. Uh, we'll, we'll come the other, the other way on up towards the audience. Is yours ready for that, Tom? I think so. We'll soon yeah. see. But yeah, exactly as you were saying, I would be along 
exactly the same if you just, principles if you just put them half and half, uh, as half Richard side, is in. Like, exactly I would do like everything in my preparation and, and training to make sure yep. that they never learn to run out and all they're ever looking for is flags. It's fun, it's easy. It can be a little bit boring, a little bit repetitious at times, but for me that's more important than doing all these angles at a young age and testing to see what you can do because that's what's out there in, in sort of later on life for them. So we've taken the guide rails away, uh, but we've left the poles there on the floor just to, just to make it easy for the horse. And for me, I'm always trying to think in, in kind of favour of the horse and trying to make it easy for them to do what we want to do. For me, it's, it's about the confidence and not trying to catch them out. You know, horses, they're amazing animals and, and they want to do the job for us. And it's very much down to us to show them and guide them how to do it. Uh, so, you know, I, as I say with this horse, I couldn't be happier. So, we've done that narrow fence there for me, which is, uh, you know, a perfect one to start with once these horses are established at jumping around a, a course of a metre uh, or so. Uh, but now we're going to jump this one here, just off a bit more of a turn, but we're going to, well, for me, we're going to go back and we're going to put our V-poles on it uh, to make it easy. So if, if you girls could just grab the top rails off here. Uh, should we come right or left to it, Tommy? We'll come right to it, because we came left to the other one to start with, shall we? I'm better on the right, yeah. You, <laughs> Tom's better on the right, so we'll come off the right. Uh, and again, you know, you just be mindful of keeping everything uh, equal uh, off the left and the right. So, uh, and it's, a, it's a bit of a different question, because obviously here, you've got very much like where you put your um, show jump at the beginning of sort of teaching a horse to canter around Ooh. and jump a fence. You've got your, your long wall line to bring the shoulder off, to keep them nice, long and level. They've got a lot of time to see it. Coming around this corner, it's quite important to maintain your canter, but also your shoulder. So it's everything that we've been doing sort of in the build-up within the show jumps till now. So I've, I've very clearly uh, brought my fella down here to show him the jump, but he's not very interested in the jump. He's more interested in you guys. Uh, I'm not making a fuss about that. I'll just quietly walk a bit closer to the fence uh, I, he if doesn't I like show the sand that you brought in with you. Say again, mate. He doesn't like this coloured sand that you I, brought in with you. Do you, think, do you think that's what it is? Yeah, I think he it thinks it's be. water, Christ. Uh, no, but, but on a serious note, for me, as long as the horse knows you're not asking him to jump this fence, showing it to him uh, is a perfectly acceptable thing to do when you're training. I, I would be very careful that they don't think you're asking to jump it because no one wants to jump on these things from, from the standstill. Uh, but, but to show him, and again, just, just make it easy for him to do what we want him to do. Uh, so I'm going to come off the left, I'm going to jump the other one we've jumped. Uh, again, just mindful that he's just stood about for a second. And then I'm going to loop back around there off the right and hopefully jump my new fence. And you can sort of see there that Rich came with a real positive canter. No different to sort of the show jumping we were warming up over earlier with the, with the guide rails. Keep that positive canter. Even the jump for the horse, which is the same, so important for the cross country phase. Okay, so I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I, I definitely thought my horse didn't pick that fence up till the last stride, and, and, and he relied on the fact that he was confident in me to do it rather than he clocked it. So we'll just repeat it again until for me. He clocks it a little bit earlier, I'll make the turn a little bit squarer, get it more in the middle of his stride. And the horse, you know, rewards me with a lovely, a lovely, you know, a lovely jump. I, I really, this horse to me tonight has, has really uh, grown, you know, and, and for us these evenings, you know, it, it's really good ex, a good chance to give this horse experience. Would you agree, Tom? I completely, and I also think you've got the first very simple skinny very much nice profile um, to begin with and then this one's nearly like what you're getting in the modern day era of eventing sort of a hidden skinny round a 90 degree corner and sort of, sort of how Richard's still coming with his positive canter round to the fences um, so important because nowadays the time's so tight and it's all about just being able to keep that rhythm all the way to the fence So we try and do the same and keep the, the positive count all the way around rather than getting negative and backward. 
And I don't know if you guys could see how early Tom was focused on that fence. He was right back there. His eyes were glued to that fence. There was, in Tom's mind, there was only one place he was going, uh, and that was to the middle of that jump. And that just gives the horse so much confidence, uh, you know, in, in that kind of really positive ride. Uh, he, he, was, he was lined up back out there for it, rather than turning the corner and then think, oh, oh, you know, there's a kind of jump in the way. Uh, I completely agree. So half the problem with people not making the time cross country is not going so quick in between the fences, it's being able to be so confident around a corner, having the balance, having the rhythm, um, trusting. And sort of with him being a bit younger, you always hear about bringing the shoulder around the 90 degree turn. For me, I just let me, me I bring me round, and then with that, you're bringing the shoulder around. Ooh, that's your sand. He didn't like that black sand. And, and you know, that's another real prime example. A young green horse making a little mistake. And now, exactly the same as we did with the show jumps, we just come again and we give him the opportunity to learn uh, from what's just happened. And hopefully, ho oh ho, good boy, good boy. Ooh. Okay, well, well, well. So, Really, really good example of a young horse. The question we're asking him, he's perfectly happy with, but there's some black sand there just on the landing uh, that kind of came in with the jump that he's just a little bit worried about. He's answered for me the question both times. He showed a lot of confidence in me. And now I'm just going to walk him through that sand. Yeah, you see, that's exactly what it is. I'm not going to make a big fuss about it. I want his confidence. I don't want him... Uh, to fear me, you know, and, and it might take a minute, it might take five minutes, uh, but for me at this stage it's worth spending the time. We want them to go for us. We don't want to frighten the life out of them uh, to go for us. Would you agree with that, Tom? I completely agree, and um, I don't know what you think, but sometimes we take our horses out quite young cross country. You may be established around here, but a little bit like my chestnut horse earlier, she's seven, but sometimes when she gets nervous, we lose McCanter. And no different to how I, sort of I was trotting in the end over the cross pole when I broke in the canter and not rushing her. I'd be doing exactly the same over my, my skinnies or my cross country fences. Um, for me, everything's just about confidence. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, and then I'm just going to repeat it the other way until he gets the idea that actually it's fine and the horse for me, we'll really, benefit, uh, uh, we'll really benefit from that. We'll see. <laughs> oh boy. You know, and it's a, it's a really good, it's a really good example uh, of what young horses do. But there's no, for me, you know, I'm pleased with him. He's, he, every time, uh, he's coming up with the goods. He's not very sure. But he's getting better each time, and he keeps doing what I want him to do. So I'm going to do it once more, and then hopefully uh, he'll be super confident. There you go. And then he rewards us uh, with the confidence. And he's learned a lot tonight. You know, he wasn't sure about the crowd. He wasn't sure about a lot of things. Uh, and he's just got more and more confident. He had a little, uh, a little blip with the confidence there with the sand, but, but because the foundations and the trust uh, are really established, it didn't become a big problem, you know? And, and we don't give them a hard time about it, you know? Just repeat it until uh, they become confident. Are you coming again, Tom? Where are you off to? I'm finished. All oh, right, I'm coming around then. <laughs> right, so mine has done a little bit more. He's been to novice. At the same time, there's no harm in sort of this repetition. Oh, don't like the banner. So mine's got. Quite more worried about the people than the sand. <laughs> and sort of, even with two simple fences and a horse that's done a little bit more. Whoop. And 
And so even when he's starting to mess around now, he's got, starting to get a little bit tired. Just giving him the time just to play around over the skinny zones. Literally just build it up like this. So he's literally just playing around. Oh, crikey. So I'm then these are turning nearly into your cavalettis. I might just do that line one more time. I think what, what Tom said there, I think is so relevant for an event horse. Tom is well aware of the fact the horse is a little bit tired. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to stop straight away because in our sport, horses do get tired uh, and they have to learn to cope with that. Uh, and it's not just a uh, matter of fact, oh, the horse is tired, he's done enough. He is tired, but he is stay, still capable of keeping his wits about him and doing a little bit more. Uh, and that's just exactly what Tom's teaching his horse for me. Uh, you know, he's giving the horse a beautiful ride, but the horse is learning a lot. You know, it's not just the fact that the horse has come a little bit tired and then he gives up because later on in his career, when he gets to 10 and a half minutes at badminton, uh, he'll still need to keep the same jump as when he started. Uh, you know, and for me, that's a really important lesson. Uh, yeah. But in a really nice way, you know, there's no pressure, there's no stress, everything's relaxed, soft and easy. Uh, and, you know, the, the horse, or well, both horses have come on a lot for that. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, he's gone a bit tired and weak in his canter, he's going a bit disunited behind. But rather than forcing him into a situation that he might find a bit tiring, a bit weak, I've just let him play around underneath me, and they're no different to Cavaletti's. He's getting a bit tired, but at the same time, it's usually when the mistakes happen, when the horse is getting a little bit tired on the course, and it, it's no harm just to let them have a little play around, still focusing on a, a smaller object and just playing around so they're always with you, underneath you, focusing on where they're going. And most importantly nowadays is looking for the flags with all these angles and skinnies and especially like here, lots of tight turns, 90 degree turns and being able to keep a positive canter because cross country is never really 100%. So whether they go disunited or <laughs> spook at something, you've got to keep coming to the fence and there's no sort of second chances really. <laughs> no, 20 penalties are 20 penalties, isn't it, Tom? Yeah. 20 penalties is 20 penalties and yeah basically like this sort of he's done a lot more he's done his corners his skinnies oh still doesn't like flowers though um <laughs> and he's just still really developing he's done a lot more than the other horse but at the same time it's real good for him just to come back and just learn and develop in the same way as you would do with the younger horse this would be the first time he's jumped a wooden fence since um towards the end of last year um Thanks, and yeah i don't compete the horses too often so being able to just play around like this is um, fantastic for them and um, we're lucky enough to have a bit a few little fences like this home have them on little mounds and just let them pop up and down still looking for the flags leave them to their own devices find their own feet and sort of just having this that confidence and no different to with the show jumping earlier <laughs>